Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I am Agi Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I am interviewing leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week, every Monday and Thursday. In today's show, I am privileged to speak with uh, Robert Queen. Robert, you are a best-selling author and you have published 18 books so far. <laughs> you are also a speaker, a professor emeritus at the University of Michigan School of Business and one of the world's best personal and organizational change experts. Uh, you have spent the last 40 years doing research, publishing, teaching, consulting and speaking to more than half of the Fortune 500 list. Your recent talk on the subject of purpose went viral and has been viewed by over 15 million people. Robert, you are passionate to inspire positive change, and uh, I want to welcome you to Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Uh, I'm delighted to be speaking with you today. Thank you. I feel delighted to be with you. Thank you. Uh, Robert, I, I usually I always start with uh, some element of my guest's uh, story or journey, and I'm sure you have many, but I want you to pick one that you think it is relevant and key defining moment in your life's journey that brought you to where you are at the moment. There are, there are so many. I bet. <laughs> but I think... Uh, I think one that's very relevant was um, I was in college and I was in my second year and I had taken some time off and I had done some things that were helpful to people in other parts of the world. And I uh, went back to college and they handed me 101 botany and 101 chemistry and 101 English. Um, I felt absolutely alienated. It all felt so meaningless. And uh, one day, one of my roommates said, you know, you're sleeping all the time because you're depressed. And I said, I've never been depressed in my life. And he walked away and I thought, he's right. (laughs) I've got to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up. What am I going to major in? And uh, I began to focus so hard on that question. What should I major in? And I couldn't get anywhere. And one day I was walking across campus and it was as if I was hit by a stroke of lightning. And the lightning was a question. The question was up until now, what is the most significant thing you've ever done? And it was as if the answer was connected to the question, like there was no time between the question and the answer. Because the answer was so crystal clear. It was the times when I helped people in ways that would change their lives forever. They would have a better life. And uh, that answer was so clear. And then this voice inside me said, major in change. This was an incredibly exciting answer. Major in change. There was only one problem. There was no major in change. (laughs) Um, And so that put me into a deep reflection. It was like a Buddhist cone where you have to figure out the the paradox. And um, I began to think new thoughts. And I began to make new rules. Like I would never again take a course I would only take professors. Hmm. So I wouldn't take a course unless it was from a great professor. And that meant I had to go to war with the university. I, was, I couldn't be a passive consumer because the university treats you like, a, like you're going to an assembly line. I had to fight to get into those courses. Um, I would go out, and if there was a book about change, I would go out and buy it and read it. I never read extra books. If there was a lecture on campus, a public lecture, I'd go to the lecture if it was about change. My entire educational experience was transformed. 
I became a proactive learner. When I graduated from college, my diploma said sociology. But what I really had was a major in change. And then I went on to graduate school and continued that focus. And uh, it made an enormous difference. When I got my PhD, I, I wrote about change. I did research on change. I taught change. I did consulting on change. That one word integrated my entire life and brought enormous synergy in the years that followed. Mm -hmm. And when you say change, in, in what context exactly was your major in? Because change obviously is a very broad term. So, yeah. um, For me, it focuses at two levels. One is on personal change. Mm -hmm. People uh, make shifts in their lives that are important and meaningful. And the other is organizational change. I've spent decades in major companies and agencies around the world uh, helping them do what they simply can't do themselves. They don't know how to lead change, even when they believe they do. Mm -hmm. And that's been a, a magnificent, meaningful life experience working at those two levels. If I ask about the first level that you said, uh, uh, the personal change, I don't know if you would agree with me, but many people, if not most people, are very hesitant to change. Uh, why do you think that is? Um, there are many, many answers to that question, <laughs> but many of them orbit around the word fear. Uh -huh. I have so many fears about my inadequacy. I have fears about making changes in my life and the uncertainty that's involved and what might happen. Mm -hmm. um, everything conspires in this world to prevent us from making big leaps forward. Everything conspires to keep us in the box we're currently in, doing what we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard work to step outside that box. Take takes courage indeed. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's talk about uh, something that I know you have written books about and you are, uh, you've made uh, speeches and that's purpose. So you talk about living a purpose driven life. So my first question is, can you define what do you mean by purpose-driven life? How do you describe that? To have a purpose-driven life is to be very, very clear about why you're on this planet. Um, many people believe they're on the planet to eat, to sleep, to uh, reproduce, um, which are the same things animals do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's an entirely different perspective in life. And that perspective is I have a contribution to make. So my purpose is my contribution to the world. How will the world be different because I was here? How will mm -hmm. people be better off? Uh, a life purpose is not an ego mechanism. It's not something about what you acquire. I'm going to make a lot of money. That is not a life purpose. Mm. Um, I want to have a lot of power. That's not a life purpose. A life purpose is your gift to the world. Um, what is uniquely you and how do you give it away? And the moment you can answer that question, your life changes dramatically. In fact, everything changes. Um, I have a good friend who has helped 15,000 people write purpose statements. Mm -hmm. He said, my purpose is to wake you up and bring you home. And what he meant by that is the moment you write your life purpose and you get it right, you feel like you've suddenly come home. Mm. 
and you feel wide awake, right? You feel very mindful and conscious, and you can see things you didn't see before. Having a life purpose changes everything. Uh, and I, I suppose it's uh, it's not something that you can only realize it or understand it intellectually, is it? You mentioned the, the world wider way or the way that you feel. So it's emotional that is involved and probably more than that when you realize. Uh, sure. it's, it's physical, it's social, it's intellectual, it's spiritual. It mm-hmm. has every dimension of life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we spend a lot of our time interacting every day in patterns of transaction. You know, how much is this cost? Here's how much I'm going to give you for it. Um, and almost all of our conversations are, are like that. Uh, they're very much dictated by yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can be, we can go through long periods of life without feeling much meaning or we begin to stagnate. Life calls us physically to do things differently. My conscience may say, you need to lose weight. And my response is, no, I don't. Right? Um, it can be social. You need to be out with people more. You need to be serving people. I don't want to serve people. It can be intellectual. I should be learning some things. I should be reading new books. I should be taking courses. My conscience is saying, do this. and My ego is saying, no. It can be spiritual. Right? You need to be a part of something bigger than yourself. You need to be contributing. And I say, no, I don't. <laughs> so there's a constant war between the ego that would have us stay where we are and the conscience that calls us to make changes in our lives. Mm-hmm. And um, I've often written about a topic called slow death. When I deny the calls of my conscience and say, I don't need to lose weight. I don't need to go serve people. I don't need, um, I can maintain that equilibrium for a long time, Mm -hmm. but it comes at a great cost. And that cost is slow death. I slowly begin to stagnate and things get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. I finally wake up and move in a new direction. And so many of the problems on this planet for individuals, for organizations, is they're in slow death. Most organizations on this planet are in slow death. They're trapped in yesterday's culture. Thank you. And I suppose the next question would be uh, how we can identify that purpose. Uh, you read somewhere that one one way to do it is by looking carefully at uh, how your life's experiences and what keeps on happening. So could you expand on that? Yes, there's many, many answers to that question. And if you go on the internet, you'll find many um, methods that people offer, all of which have some value. Mm-hmm. Um, we work with a lot of folks where we simply say, You've got 90 seconds. Write a one-sentence life purpose. It uh, should be simple. It should be clear. Write it down. Now, most people panic when we give them that assignment. But in their 90 seconds, they put something down, and they usually don't like it very much. Mm -hmm. We say, you know, that's absolutely fine. What we want you to do, we're going to give you some ways to think about this, but Every day, we want you to take two minutes and rewrite your sentence. It may take 11 days. It may take 25 days. It may take 60 days. But one morning, you're going to rewrite that sentence, and you're going to run to whoever's closest to you and say, read this. (laughs) You're going to be excited because you've come home and you're awake, that you really will capture it. Now, there are many, many things that help, like, List the 10 best and the 10 worst things that ever happened to you. As you look at these 20 things, what has life prepared you to do that no one else can do? Mm. Now, that's a really interesting transformational question. Suddenly, because when I write my 10 best things, that makes me happy. When I write the 10 worst things, I'm depressed. I'm on the carpet. Uh, But suddenly you ask the question, 
what did these 20 things, what have they prepared you to do that no one, suddenly the 10 negative things are not negative anymore. They're teachers. Mm -hmm. And so if I've had a terrible experience, that prepares me to empathize with other people who've had that terrible experience. Um, I learned things in that process. Um, when I look at the best things that ever happened to me, you know, why did they give me joy? What was it about them? What patterns exist across these? And as I begin to look at myself, I can derive clues as I rewrite my life sentence. And there are many, many other things that can be done. But it's personal work. It's deep reflection. It's about knowing who I am. And many people cut the process at the beginning, fearing that they have nothing. Our experience is that everybody has what it takes to write a life statement. It's just a matter of engaging the process. Thank you. So when you say life statement and purpose statement, you, you refer to the same thing? Uh, well, actually, um, the, we, no, we normally talk about the life purpose as that one sentence statement. So, for example, my three words are inspire, mm -hmm. positive, change. Now, I can talk to you for two hours about the word inspire. Mm -hmm. Two hours about positive, two hours about change. Yes. Those three words are at the center of my being. If I'm in a boring meeting and I remember my life purpose, I change my behavior. I begin to say things in the meeting to benefit everyone, mm -hmm. to make it better, not to blow it up, not to be rebellious, but to make it better, to inspire positive change. Those three words are precious to me. Now, We've worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and they all have different words. <laughs> um, but when they find them, when they're down and discouraged and really struggling, those three words are like having a free psychologist. Mm. All you need to do is repeat those three words, and you start to come back out of the dark valley if you have the right words, if you have the authentic words. And so that's what we mean by life purpose. A life mission, a mission, a life statement is a, a bigger document that includes all kinds of paragraphs or lists, or whatever they might be, that help you think about yourself and about your mission and how to accomplish it. And that's a, that's a little bigger, more complex thing. But the key thing is that first sentence. I get it. <clears throat> uh, there is an, one other thing, uh, Robert, when uh, I was watching your TEDx talk, uh, and there was that uh, thing that you uh, mentioned about giving up the self-interested goals and going for or taking up the contrib uh, contributed goals. And uh, I think it was in the context of uh, some person that sh shifted their viewpoint at that time. Uh, do you want to expand on the self-centered goals versus the contributed goals? Absolutely. Um, so there's two categories. There are ego-centered goals. Mm -hmm. I need to make money so I can eat. <laughs> yes. I need to make money so I can have a house to live in, right? Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of ego goals that we all have to pursue. Um, contribution goals are ways in which I give myself away. Maybe I'm a musician and I'm most, my life is most meaningful when I'm playing extraordinary music for other people. Not for me, not to look good, not to have a standing ovation but to give it away to the audience. Now, we recognize that. If we're at a fifth grade school, elementary school, and they're putting on a play, mm -hmm. and we give them a standing ovation, it's because we recognize that those little kids are giving us all they have. If we go to a Broadway play and we have an extraordinary experience realizing the cast is giving us all they have, we give them a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. They're giving themselves away to us. And the question is, 
what's worthy of a standing ovation in my life? When am I giving all of myself away? Now, those are contribution goals. Now, they're not mutually exclusive. The moment you begin talking like this, people begin to argue against it by making them mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. The fact is that as I clarify my purpose, I begin to behave in more contributive ways. But many times in the course of a day, I am pulled back to my ego. Every time there's a threat, if someone I'm talking to picks up and looks at their phone instead of looking at me, I go into fight or flight. I pull away. Right? I can't control that. It's in my auto autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of times a day, we go into fight or flight. And we don't function very well at that level. To connect to people meaningfully, I have to come back out of that. And I have to become centered in my purpose and in my values. Um, I can learn to do that. And if I do, my entire life changes in quality. My relationships change. My experiences change. The things that happen change. So in research, I'm not just talking philosophy here. Research clearly shows this to be true. People who spend most of the time in ego goals mm -hmm. have one set of outcomes. People who spend most of the time in purpose-driven goals are, have an entirely different set of outcomes. In terms of health, there are all kinds of diseases that they're less likely to get. In terms of relationships, the relationships are much richer. In terms of money, interestingly enough, they make more money. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, sleep better at night. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. These are scientific findings. Mm -hmm. When I look at that list, I can only conclude that you and I are designed to be purpose-seeking mechanisms. When we're not, we're under, li under living our privileges. We're selling ourselves out. I would, that's uh, fantastic. I would add to that list that you started making the uh, fulfillment part, which uh, is uh, certainly something that <laughs> when you're self-centered, you, when your goals are self-centered, the fulfillment doesn't necessarily come. We, exactly. with that. And the thing to remember is we're all self-centered a good deal of the time. It's not about pushing away the ego, pushing away the self-centeredness. It's about the ability mm -hmm. to transform ourselves, to see the signals, respond to them. In fact, there's a wonderful story I should share with you. Sure. My son told me this story. He has a daughter who was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. One day, he got in an argument with this little girl and they were both pretty intense. He said in the middle of the argument, this little girl said to him, just a minute. And she stopped. She said, I need to change my own weather. She paused again. And then she began to talk to him in the most mature purpose oriented way imaginable. He said he was stunned. He said, I've never seen an adult do that. Mm. This little girl had developed the capacity to change her own weather. That's the challenge for all of us, to learn how to change our own weather and do what that little girl did. And most of us don't. We react and we go to fight or flight. And we stay there. Mm -hmm. And that's... The, the challenge to recognize that the weather is uh, our own internal thoughts and feelings that most, many times happen unconsciously. We don't even realize it, but we get dragged along yep. towards that uh, fight or flight uh, behavior. Uh, Robert, there was uh, one other thing that I really enjoyed with uh, that uh, talk that you gave, the TEDx talk, and that was, uh, you did that exercise with the people that uh, they stood up and instead of introducing to each other, like, hi, my name is Agi Keramides, for example, you'd ask them to say, hi, my purpose is, and uh, in a few words to describe their purpose. And 
that for me was I I started thinking how would things be if people would actually talk about these things, these high ideals, rather than talking about you know the more uh, mundane and uh, uninteresting stuff that many people talk about in conversation. Yeah, the interesting thing about that exercise, which I've done all over the world, mm-hmm. I say, okay, please stand up, turn to the stranger next to you, and don't say all the things you would normally say to a stranger. Simply tell them your what you're most passionate about, your mm-hmm. highest purpose. Yes. Now the audience goes into terror, right? As I give those instructions, this is just terrifying. How could I ever do this? I so I help them a little bit, and I say, okay, stand up and do it. And the amazing thing, as you saw in that video, is that in about five seconds, the volume in the Mm. auditorium is raising the roof. These people are so engaged, and it's almost impossible to stop them from talking, right? (laughs) They're so linked and so passionate about what they're they're conversing. Mm -hmm. And it's a silly little experiment but it illustrates exactly what you picked up. There's so much potential Mm -hmm. in our connections and we throw it away. We talk about, we tell them our name, we talk about the weather um, and then turn around and go to the next place. Um, In our relationships is where we tend to find our greatest meaning in life. Mm -hmm. And many of us don't Mm -hmm. find much meaning there. And much of it is because we're afraid to present ourselves authentically. And that's what those people were doing. That's the one of the most uh, important things, isn't it? The, to be authentic, to share. And I will share something from my own personal uh, experience. If, if you had asked me, say, five years ago, so I give, what is your purpose? Or introduce yourself and say what your purpose is. Yes, I would panic very much, as you said, because I had never thought about it. So life, you know, takes over and uh, you live on autopilot. And unless something happens that shifts you out of it and start making some realizations. Uh, For me, it was maybe the transition into my mid-40s when I (laughs) realized that, you know, it's the second half of my life uh, now. I realized that I have to look inside me and see all those things. What are my values? What is my purpose? What do I enjoy doing? Uh, There was something that you mentioned earlier. What was the when you had that uh, stroke of lightning that you said in your story, what is my the the most important thing that I've done? Or uh, and that really changed me when I started going down that uh, that route and finding out things about myself. Uh, yes, it's often in crisis mm-hmm. that we're forced to do the work of reflection. So for example, it can be a midlife crisis. For many people, that's when it happens. But for others, it can happen any time in life. Someone dies. Someone says, I don't want to live with you anymore. Goodbye. My house burns down. There are hundreds of traumas in life. And the natural reaction is to collapse, um, to end up on the couch of the psychologist. Mm -hmm. And um, that psychologist can use any of a hundred therapies, but all of the therapies have one common denominator, a clarification of values and purpose. The moment that you clarify your purpose and your values, you get up off the couch, you walk out of the psychologist's office and you say, "I'm, I'm, I'm healed, I'm ready to go. And what you've done is you've set a meaningful direction in your life and you now have empowered yourself to act on it. Mm -hmm. So it can happen for an elementary school girl. It can happen to a teenager. It can happen at midlife. 
And yet we have people who even resisted at midlife. <laughs> but when it happens, it's like a rebirth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've awake, I, I wake up and I come home. <laughs> and suddenly I know who I really am. And everything changes when you make that shift. Thank you. You, you use the phrase come home a few times in our conversation. And uh, I, I love this metaphor of home in that case, which uh, it's a big topic on its own where what uh, home is. So I will <laughs> probably leave it for now. Um, Robert, uh, I would like also to ask you some uh, quick fire questions uh, as well. Uh, what does personal development mean to you? It means growth. Um, and it means growth on all the levels, mm-hmm. physical, social, intellectual, spiritual. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of us deny one or other of those dimensions. But I think we need to be vigilant at every level and we need to be listening to our conscience because mm-hmm. it always will take us to personal growth. If, if we let it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self what's, and you could give him one piece of advice only, what, what would that be? Have patience and live in love. So let me ask another hypothetical question then. If you could wave a magic wand and change something in the world as it is today, what would you change? Mm. What I'm already trying to do in the world Mm -hmm. is reach as many people as I possibly can Mm -hmm. and help them find within themselves who they really are. The moment you do that, relationships and communities change. We live in a dark, dark time where leaders of the world are inadequate to the crises they face. Mm -hmm. We recently experienced a pandemic We could have had a world leader from any of the countries say, this is not a Chinese problem, or this is not an American problem, or it's not an Italian problem. This is a world problem. So I'm not going to act like I'm an American or Chinese leader or an Italian leader. I'm going to do the following things to bring the world together to solve this problem as quickly fast as we possibly can and to save as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. That pandemic, that crisis was a golden opportunity for people to lead. And what we watched happen was people politicize the problem to their own ego needs. And we all lost because of it. We had millions of people die. Um, That applies to virtually every issue on this planet. And so my wish would be to help people find who they really are. And it's not a monster. It's an angel. And when you find it, great things happen around you. Mm -hmm. In other words, inspire inspire positive change. Inspire positive change. That's correct. (laughs) Very astute of you. (laughs) Uh, Robert, obviously... Being this being a limited amount of time, I had to, you know, select the questions that uh, I had to ask you. I had more to ask, but uh, I want to uh, give you the opportunity if there was something that you really wanted to talk about and we completely missed it. Uh, is there a, is there something that you would like to discuss? Yeah, what I'd like to say is what a privilege it is to meet someone like you. We've only known each other for 30 minutes, but in those 30 minutes, I have felt who you are. So here's this man on the other side of the ocean, (laughs) trying to make a 
a positive difference in the world mm -hmm. and doing it in the way that works best for him, using his talents, his strengths. The result is I can feel the centeredness of your soul. And it makes me rejoice. And I believe that there are people all around us that are like you. And if we pay attention to them, it helps us follow the model that we end up seeing. Mm -hmm. And so I just want you to know I'm deeply grateful for the work you're doing every day to make a difference. I can feel it and I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. You brought you brought tears to my eyes. You can see them. I know the the listener can't uh, see them, but uh, uh, I appreciate so much what you told me, uh, and I I'm I'm grateful and blessed as well to have connected and uh, spoken with you today, uh, Robert. What is the the best way for people to find out more about you? Um. There's a website, Robert E. Quinn, mm -hmm. that has a number of things on it. Yes. There's a there's a course that's available at the Ross School of Business Executive Education. It's called Becoming Who You Really Are. And it's a very unusual course. It's 100 days long, and it's three minutes a day. Oh. And each day is a story. So that's all you get is a story. And then two questions. What principle of leadership does this story illustrate for you? What's your interpretation? And what can you do today to live that principle? And then at the end of the week, you get to share one of your answers with other people. Mm -hmm. um, that's proven to be a very impactful experience for lots of people. So if the listeners are interested, they can look at that at the uh, Ross School of Business Executive Education website. Coming who you really are, hundred day course by Robert Quinn. So they type some of that in there um, into their Google Finder, then uh, it'll take them there. Sure, I'll put it in the the oh, podcast uh, notes as well. They will find it easily. And I'm actually going to do that myself because it's very intriguing to just <laughs> ignore <laughs> it. It's uh, something that I, I want to find out more about. Uh, Robert, I want to thank you very much indeed for your time for this conversation for your wisdom shared and uh, i want uh, please keep on doing your uh, <laughs> your inspiring work helping transform and inspire positive uh, change uh, any parting words um no i think uh well, yes, in the words of thank you, because that's what you're doing, inspiring positive change. Thank you very much. Best wishes. Thank you for listening. Please take a moment to subscribe and review Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts and also share this podcast with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to gain access to exclusive content while supporting this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, or if you have any questions, join my Facebook group Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdmgroup. Until next time, stand out, don't fit in.